Hello everyone and welcome to your Glassnode video report for the week on chain week 31. I'm your host Checkmate and we're recording this on the 3rd of August 2021. So this week we've seen some positive price action which is a welcome change from the consolidation and, uh, and downwards price action we've seen over the last two and a half months since the sell-off in mid-May. And the market really rallied up and over $42,000. So what we've really seen is the first green candles in a long time. And what becomes of interest at that point in time, when we start to get some volatility, is how does the market react to that? So what we're going to look at today is the aggregate of profits and losses that are realized on chain, how that feeds into the aggregate spending behavior, which different cohorts of entities on chain were actually spending their coins and which ones were staying dormant, a bit of an assessment on the exchange flows, what's going on with the balances, the inflows, the outflows, and a bit of a balance between Coinbase and Binance being the two largest, largest exchanges by, uh, by coin holdings. And we'll also look at what the macro sentiment, the accumulation, the potential for a supply squeeze, and the on-chain activity, what do all these different pieces of the on-chain puzzle tell us about what the market is feeling and how it's what the overall sentiment is now that we've got some positive price action. So that's what we're going to overview for this, uh, this session, and we'll jump into Glassnode Studio. So here we are in Glassnode Studio. We're looking at our week on-chain 31 dashboard. And we can see that for both BTC and for ETH, we've had some positive price action over the last week, uh, which is very nice considering we've had a downwards period of consolidation. We've really been ranging between this $40,000 down to the $29,000 floor for BTC. And we've finally got a relief rally to the upside. And a big question that we're looking at after a period of time of lengthy consolidation and relatively negative sentiment is what what is the character of this rally? And there's there's two kind of macro views we can think about this. One is a disbelief rally type framework, which is what we see at the start of bullish trends, which is where everybody's become accustomed to the downside price action. Sentiment is very low. People believe that it's a bear market and they just simply don't believe that price can rally higher. And therefore, what they generally do is we see the market shorting it, doubting it, and ultimately, if, if price continues to move against them, that's why it gets the term the disbelief rally. People simply can't believe that it is what it is. Now, conversely, this could also roll over and actually turn and continue the resumption of this bearish trend, or at least continue in this consolidating range where it trades sideways and people then start to build up that negative sentiment again. So really what we're looking for, are what are the triggers that may suggest that we have either a disbelief rally or a bearish relief rally on hand? That's really the framework we're looking at. We don't know what the future holds. We're trying to use on-chain data to understand what the overall sentiment is, how people are behaving, how they're spending their coins, and what that tells us about the, uh, the market moving forward. So we're going to start our analysis looking at the profit and loss that's realized on chain. So what we're looking at here are coins that were previously moved either at a higher price, meaning that they're, an, they're an unrealized loss, or at a much lower price, meaning they're at an unrealized profit. Which of those coins are currently being spent now that we have some positive price action? Now we can see here on our realized profit and our realized loss metrics, both with a seven day moving median, just to really smooth out so we can see really what's the, uh, what's the typical behavior over a weekly period. And we can see that particularly through, since mid-May, we've really seen a dominance of realized losses. The majority of coins that were being spent in a reducing fashion, mind you, but the majority of coins being spent were coins that were at a loss, which means that they were accumulated up here during this topping formation, and they're essentially being sold and spent down here at lower prices. So this really represents people who are fairly upset about the, uh, the overall uh, behavior of the market. It could be some tax harvesting, but there's various reasons why people are selling their coins at a loss and spending them on chain. Now, converse to that, what we've actually seen is a, a significant decline in overall profitability. So we're seeing coins that were in profit actually spend less and less by quite a substantial margin, meaning that those coins are remaining fairly dormant. So this is demonstrating that they're not willing to sell down at those cheaper prices. Now we can see here that during the rally higher, we've actually had a fairly substantial peak over about $2 billion worth of realized profits. So what this is suggesting is that some of those coins that were in profit were spent on chain during this rally. And potentially that means that they're taking that exit liquidity and actually leaving the system. So there is some portion of the market to the tune of about $2 billion. And we can see that this is notably an outlier relative to what we've seen over the preceding months. 
So it's telling us something that there is some portion of the market that's actually taking those, uh, those profits off the table. So what we can then look at is our adjusted SOPA and our spent output age bands to understand a little bit more about the character of this profit taking. So the SOPR metric or the SOPA metric will trend higher when profits are taken and trend lower and below one when losses are realized. Now what we would really like to see if we're looking for constructive price action, we're looking for the market absorbing that sell side pressure, we actually want to see SOPA trend higher which means that profits were taken but essentially stick the landing and not fall too far below one before reverting back to the upside. So when SOPA is in a positive realm, it's telling us that the market is absorbing those profits. And if price continues to trend higher, that's a positive sign for the demand equation. So it's showing us that there's enough demand to absorb those profits being realized. Conversely, what we've seen over the period from mid-May through to, uh, to late July is ASOP was trending well and truly below a value of one. And that correlates with these large realized losses. It's showing that the majority of coins that were moving on chain were realizing a net loss and the market was absorbing those capitulation events. We can see these fairly dramatic spikes down as price rallied down towards the, uh, or fell down towards the 29,000 level. That's when we saw these very significant, coincident with the, uh, the March 2020 event, um, very significant losses realized on chain. So what we would really like to see for constructive price action is ASOPA continue to trend higher, um, come back down to one, reset. What that means is that profitable coins have stopped being spent. It's showing that conviction to hold and then price and ASOPA to continue to rally higher. That's showing that the demand side is able to absorb that sell side. In the more bearish scenario, we'd actually see ASOPA fall back down into below one territory, showing that losses are being realized. The market is struggling to absorb those losses and people are starting to actually panic out. So similar to what we saw during the consolidation, there's people who don't believe that it's going to be trending higher and they're essentially taking whatever liquidity they can. So we would like to see it trend higher. If it falls down below, that would certainly indicate a, a more bearish bias. Now, what we can also see on our spent output age bands uh, the darker colors down the bottom are coins that are multiple years old and we trend up to the one year uh, sorry to the one hour one day one week in the lighter yellow colors now what we have seen is that over the last week so as we've had this price rally higher we've seen a very slight uptick let's zoom in a little bit so we can get a picture we've seen an uptick in the amount of these older coins at least six months but really in that one to two to three year bands a slight uptick in those uh, coin spending. So it's telling us that there is some profits being taken. Some of these 2 billion uh, in, in profits that were realized are likely coming from these multi-year old coins. There is a relationship between those because they are the coins that are gonna be able to realize the largest magnitude of profits. Now, what's important to note is it's certainly not quite like what we had here in the uh, during the actual sell down in mid-May. So it's certainly not to the same extent. So it's not something that's telling us there's a mass exit but it's telling us that some entities on chain are realizing those profits. And what we're really looking for is does that turn into a much larger trend? If we start to see those older coins coming back to life in a very, very large way, it starts to suggest that there's a lack of confidence in the market. And conversely, if we actually don't see that, it's showing that that conviction to hold remains. So that's certainly something to be paying attention to. And we can see this also in our realized cap hollow wave. So this represents the amount of value in the network based on when the coins were last moved. What proportion of that is captured by the different age brackets? Now, what we've seen is a very strong downtrend in these warmer colors, which are younger coins. We're talking about 24 hours at the bottom, one day to one week in the red, one week to one month. We've seen a fairly structural downtrend in those essentially since February. Now, when we have a downtrend in the younger coins, that's telling us that those young coins are moving into a state of dormancy. It suggests that there's a degree of accumulation going on because when you have coins that are being readily sold, say somebody has a one-year one year old coin, when they spend that, it immediately becomes a one hour and then it ages to a one day and then a one week. So the more liquid that coins are, the younger the age brackets will be and we will see a larger proportion of these red colors. Now, conversely, we'll see these greens and yellows start to swell and get larger when those coins are maturing. When younger coins are not moving, they've been taken into cold storage and they've been put away and are starting to age. Now, you can see this event here where we saw our one hour spike, then our one day spike, then our one week spike. 
So in a positive scenario, what we would actually like to see is most of these red colors continue to trend down. And particularly if we get continued price to the upside, we want this to continue. We want a downtrend in young coins whilst price rallies higher. And that's showing that those young coins are actually being accumulated as prices rise. And that's a conviction and strength in the market. On the other hand, if we start to see these really rally, we can see and it, it's important to bear in mind that these can rally and price can rally during a bull market. This is because those older coins are being spent, but there's sufficient demand to absorb those coins. So we really have to look at what's going on in the on-chain metrics and relate it to what's going on in the price. So what we're seeing during this bull market is a rising of young coins. The market is able to absorb it and we continue to trend higher. So let's jump now to our exchange balances because we've seen quite a bit of activity going on in the exchange front. Um, the first one is that our miners have sent some portion. You can see that during the price rally this week, there's been an increase of about threefold of the amount of coins that they've been sending to exchanges. Now, it is important to note that whilst it's a threefold from the bottom, it is coming off a very low base. You can actually see that miners have been distributing less and less to exchanges even while they're going through the great migration. So it actually shows us quite a bit of resilience in the mining network. And some of this will be balanced by miners who are offline in China and impacted by the ban and the great migration. The amount of sell pressure that they have to impose to cover their costs is likely to be being offset, at least in part, by the enhanced profitability by all of the miners who are still online. So the, the mining market has this very interesting resilience where some of the miners are under income stress, some of them are under high profitability, and because it's a 50-50 split by and large, it's telling us that there's actually a, a fairly equilibrium, an equilibrium is in reach between those two parties. Now on the exchange front, we've seen a very substantial amount of outflows this week. And we can actually see this on the percent balance on the exchanges. After this uptick during the May sell-off, we started to plateau. And then this week in particular, we saw a very significant decline. We were down to about 13.2% of the coin supply held on exchanges, which is very, very similar to our 2021 lows. So um, perhaps this is actually showing a reversal and there are coins coming out of exchanges. And what's going to be important is to watch this trend as it continues over the coming months. And what's quite interesting is if we look at Binance and Coinbase, who are two of the largest exchanges, particularly by, uh, by coins held on, on balance. Binance has shown a very, very strong growth in holdings throughout all of 2021. But this has represented the largest outflow in some time. And Coinbase had a very significant outflow during 2021. So by and large, the opposite to what we had in Binance. It saw a number of very old coins from around 2017 um, that were spent and sent to Coinbase uh, earlier in the month. And what we've then seen is a large proportion of those have then have been uh, withdrawn since. So perhaps in aggregate, what we're starting to see is the reversion back towards net withdrawals from exchanges. It's showing that there has certainly been some kind of accumulation that's gone on during this entire consolidation process. So this is an important trend to pay attention to. And if we do resume that trend to the downside, it's obviously more positive, taking coins out of liquid circulation and into cold storage. But it's also one of those trends that takes a bit of time to evolve and, uh, and see how these coin flows work. But it's one to keep an eye on. So just to close out, we're going to look at the macro sentiment of the market. What, how we can use on-chain data to understand what's going on across a broad scope of investors. So what we're looking at here is a metric called liveliness. And I have two different versions here. One is the standard liveliness and one is the entity adjusted liveliness. Now, for those who are not familiar with liveliness, I will give a, a quick overview, but I would certainly uh, recommend that you go and look at our Glassnode Academy. We have a very full entry and a uh, explainer video on the metric that will give you all of the ins and outs so you can understand more about how to interpret liveliness. So at a very high level, liveliness is calculated by every coin that's in circulation. Each day, it will accumulate one coin day. So that's what we consider in our metric of lifespan, how old a coin is. Every coin will age one coin day every day. Now, when somebody spends a coin, that's going to destroy that lifespan. So it could be a year old coin, it gets spent, it destroys that one year worth of coin days, and it then starts reaccumulating coin days. It's reset to zero and it starts reaccumulating. So what liveliness does is it looks at all of the coin days that have ever been created, so the entire coin supply, how many coin days have been created versus divided by how many have been spent. 
So what it will do is it will trend down when there's more dormancy, when fewer coin days are destroyed than are being created, showing that more of the coins are remaining dormant, hodled, accumulated. Conversely, when we have an uptrend and the steeper the uptrend, the more coin days are being spent. The more older coins are being spent in the system, it's showing that there's more being spent than are being created, and it's showing activity. It's showing that people are spending their coins, particularly their older coins, and the steeper this is, the more lifespan is being spent. And we can see that we had a lot of spending going on in Q1. It started to slow down from February onwards, and we've actually started to resume back into a downtrend, which has shown that there has been accumulation on net across the whole market. There's been accumulation over the last couple of months. Now, this recent spike that we can see naturally correlates with our $2 billion worth of realized uh, profits. It also correlates with some of those older coins being spent. We know there's been large withdrawals out of exchanges. There's been a lot going on. Now, some of that is going to be internal activity, um, internal spends and wallet management by exchanges during a relatively low fee environment. And some of it will be economic, uh, economically important uh, behavior, people actually spending their coins and coins changing hands. Now, what we can see on our entity adjusted version is that these spikes are there, but not to the same extent. So what this has done is it's filtered out those internal events that are otherwise uneconomical or don't actually make sense to consider as a changing hands of coins. It's an internal self-spend. And we can actually see that overall, we do still have a downtrend intact. So what that's telling us is that overall the market is accumulating or hodling more than it's spending. It's showing that overall the conviction remains relatively strong and we're not seeing a large amount of these older coins being spent. Now, obviously what we don't wanna see for um, a more bearish type uh, scenario is if we actually see those coins being spent, liveliness starts to trend higher, even if we have weak price action. That's saying that there is a loss of conviction. So we can use the trend of liveliness to understand what's going on on those two fronts. And we can also see here how the entity adjustment type system has removed some of these what are otherwise anomalies that may be a single cold wallet in an exchange moving, but doesn't actually represent a changing hands or a new buyer and a new seller. And finally, just to close out, the on-chain activity is certainly one that uh, is showing, it's still relatively soft. It's relatively weak in terms of the amount of activity uh, that we're seeing on-chain. We're looking at our number of transactions and our entity adjusted number of transactions. We can see that there's a relatively uh, large downtrend in terms of that level of activity. Um, we can actually see that the transaction counts on both of these is actually below where we were in March 2020. Um, we can see that even in this pre the 2019 bullish uh, pre-bull type accumulation phase, we have a much lower transaction count than what we had going on back here. Now, what we are seeing is a little bit of an uptick in transaction volume. So it's starting to say that there's fewer transactions, but of larger sizes. That could very well be a smart money, bigger buyer type accumulation behavior. Uh, we've also seen that entities with uh, less than 10 BTC have been quite aggressively accumulating. Uh, during this period. So whilst activity is not necessarily a driving parameter uh, behind where we can see the market going, it's just one of those things to keep in mind that at the moment, transaction flows and the amount of uh, activity on chain is relatively quiet, especially in a historical basis. So what we will see is that when we get more volatility in the market, we see more of this activity come on chain, more people speculating, more people moving volume and flows around. So it's one of those metrics that it can be an input to our model, but it's certainly not necessarily the driving model. And that's how we look at all of these in combination. So hopefully that was useful. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, make sure you give us uh, comments and reviews on uh, on YouTube if you're finding these, uh, these week on chains uh, valuable. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.